And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Mary Maté. Welcome to our listeners and viewers. When it comes to the wealthy funders of right-wing causes, the big names are well-known. Billionaires like the industrialist Koch brothers and the casino magnate Sheldon Adelson. Super PACs like Americans for Prosperity and Carl Rove's Crossroads GPS. Now, through them, hundreds of millions of dollars have poured into right-wing causes and candidates. But now it turns out this web of dark money donations is even more secretive than we previously thought. That's because the operations of a largely unknown group have now come to light. They're called Donors Trust, a nonprofit charity based in Virginia. Since 1999, Donors Trust has handed out nearly $400 million in private donations to more than 1,000 right wing and libertarian groups. The fact Donors Trust has been able to quietly do so appears to explain why it exists. Wealthy donors can back the right wing causes they want without attracting public scrutiny. Donors Trust is classified as a donor advised fund under U.S. tax law, meaning its funders don't have direct say in where their money goes. That, in turn, allows them to remain largely anonymous. But the most detailed accounting to date shows donors' trust funds a wish list of right-wing causes, prompting Mother Jones magazine to label it, quote, the dark money ATM of the right. Donors' trust recipients include the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, a mechanism for corporate interests to help write state laws, the Franklin Center for Government and Public Integrity, a media outlet that unabashedly promotes right-wing causes, and the State Policy network, a number of right-wing think tanks that push so-called free market policies. But the major focus of Donors Trust appears to be funding the denial of global warming. More than a third of Donors Trust donations, at least $146 million, has gone to think tanks and other groups that challenge the science of climate change. Later in the broadcast, we'll take a closer look at that funding of climate change denial. But first, we turn to an overview of Donors Trust and look at why it's been able to evade public scrutiny until now. Joining us from Washington, D.C. is John Dunbar, politics editor at the Center for Public Integrity, worked on the group's months-long investigation into Donors Trust. We did ask Donors Trust to join us, but they declined our request. John Dunbar, lay out just what Donors Trust is. Well, they're essentially a pass-through. Um, what they do is, is they act as a kind of a middleman uh, between what are uh, very large, well-known uh, private foundations created by uh, mostly by corporate executives like the Kochs, for example, uh, and they direct the money of those contributions to uh, a, a very large network of right-leaning free market think tanks across uh, across the country, including those that you've named. Um, what by doing by, by running it through the middleman, it, it essentially obscures the identity of the original donors uh, of, of the folks who have provided the funds themselves. And the organization itself actually uh, makes that clear on its own website, uh, essentially saying uh, people who give uh, money to the, to the organization can uh, avoid being identified or being connected with uh, p potentially controversial uh, issues. And uh, John Dunbar, so the figure is $400 million since 1999. Why is it that all this is just coming to light now? Well, we kind of stumbled onto it, to be honest with you. We've, we've been at the Center for Public Integrity. That's publicintegrity.org if you'd like to read our, our full report on it. Um, we were looking at activities at the state level, and we were noticing a certain uh, uh, continuity. <laughs> There's a certain sameness to what was going on in various states. Uh, on these issues, and we've we've been looking at the American Legislative Exchange Council for quite some time, and we were looking uh, for how these organizations were funded, um, and this donors trust organization uh, kept popping up, and it seemed to be such a, 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 a an amorphously named organization, we couldn't really figure out where it was. So we got, got to wondering, well, who's funding Donors Trust? Um, and then we backed it up a step, and then we started looking at some of the, the more uh, uh, better-known um, right-wing free market um, uh, foundations, particularly those run by the Koch brothers, the Searle Freedom Trust, for example, is another one, the Bradley Foundation. These are all very well-known 
right-leaning foundations and found that uh, an enormous amount of the funds that came into Donors Trust came from those from those organizations. John Dunbar, in your report, you speak with the Donors Trust president and CEO Whitney Ball. She says much of the group's focus is on the state level because of, quote, gridlock at the federal level of government means donors see, quote, a better opportunity to make a difference in the states. Uh, Ball also sits on the board of the State Policy Network. Can you talk about this focus on activity at the state level? Yeah, I think that uh, I don't think anybody would argue with her point <laughs> that it's hard to get anything done in Washington these days. Uh, they've they've been a lot more successful at, uh, at the state level, uh, and I think that in Washington we have a tendency to sort of get uh, tunnel vision. We don't think that anything that happens outside of Washington really matters, when in fact uh, the the laws that are passed in the states are extremely important. Uh, some of the focus of the of the donors trust recipients have been on specific state issues that you know affect all of us. Uh, you know, some of their favorite issues are right to work laws in the states. Uh, climate uh, uh, issues, renewable energy, as you'll you'll hear from uh, uh, Suzanne and, and the Guardian, uh, which has done such great work on that, and as well as um, you know tax issues, et cetera. Uh, people tend to um, look at states and what's happening uh, in a particular state in isolation. They don't look around and see that the same thing seems to be happening in other states, and it's it's this is clearly a coordinated effort to create state-based think tanks. There's 51 of them that they've funded all across the country to push uh, legislative issues. Uh, and then they created their own media empire to uh, support, even support the ideas behind those issues. Well, John Dunbar, if you could follow up on that, this media group, the Franklin Center, uh, Center for Government uh, and Public Integrity, uh, they receive 95 percent of their funding from the Donors Trust? Uh, right, and that was uh, kind of shocking, actually. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we've, that is a foundation-financed uh, uh, reporting organization. Uh, I have to say that the Center for Public Integrity is also a foundation-financed reporting organization. So, uh, however, we do not get 95 percent of our funding from from any individual donor. Uh, Franklin does. Uh, the the difficulty with that is that uh, first of all, you have to wonder um, you know, what what uh, whether the reporting is is uh, going to be influenced by that single donor. Secondly, um, they are a C3, uh, which is which means donations to them are, are tax deductible, and, and they don't pay taxes themselves. That's a public trust, by the way. That's the donors' trust is in the same position. Um, if they were not a, a publicly financed nonprofit, they would lose their nonprofit status by by getting all of their money or most of their money through donors' trust. They're able to maintain their C3 status as a quote you know publicly financed charity unquote. Uh, and if if the, all of that money came money came from one person, for example, they they'd lose that exemption, or they would be part of uh, uh, they would have to be absorbed by whatever foundation it was that was funded. John, in, in 2009, Republicans, bloggers, conservative think tanks began to cite a report that the Obama administration had pumped billions of stimulus funds into phantom congressional districts, suggesting money intended to create jobs and sure up the economy had been misused or lost. One of the key websites to report this was NewMexicoWatchdog.org, which is almost entirely funded by donors trust. The story was picked up by Fox News, like in this report from Stuart Varney. Take a look at this map, please. The government is claiming jobs created in nine Oklahoma congressional districts. Problem, there's only five. Jobs in eight districts of Iowa. Big problem, there's only five. Jobs in eight districts in Connecticut. Again, there's only five. Jobs in three congressional districts in the Virgin Islands. There is only one. And as you point out, Bill, Puerto Rico. The government claims 17,544 jobs created or saved in six congressional districts. There is only one congressional district. District in Puerto Rico. I don't know if we should be laughing or crying no. over this. I mean, Puerto Rico alone, 99th Congressional District, 98th Congressional District, a no-number Congressional yes. District. I mean, good Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Raise your eyebrows, please. Look, it's very bad, very unreliable statistics, and it really undermines all of these claims, these gross claims of job creation from stimulus. That Fox News report was based on a report by New Mexico Watchdog.org, one of the many so-called watchdog websites that are almost entirely funded by the donors trust John Dunbar your response well I think that the implication of that 
report was that there were uh, millions and millions of dollars that were being misspent, uh, when the reality was it was data errors. Um, I don't think anyone would uh, defend the, the government's uh, ability to uh, create accurate databases. They clearly didn't do a very good job on, 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 that, uh, on that front, at least on the Recovery Act. However, the, the implication that all of this money was going into a black hole was, was actually nonsense. It was kind of a phantom issue about phantom districts, as the Associated Press uh, had reported. Um, a lot of the reporting by these different watchdog organizations that are funded by Franklin has been called into question, uh, in, in, including by the, the, the Neiman Center at, at Harvard uh, that's called it uh, a lack in context and, in some cases, actually distortions of the facts. We're going to uh, break. John Dunbar, politics editor at the Center for Public Integrity, works on this months-long investigation into the donors' trust called Donors Use Charity to Push Free Market Policies in States. When we come back, Suzanne Goldenberg will also join us of The Guardian, who's been investigating the funding of climate denial groups. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.